गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ प्रेफेस टू शेक्सपियर इन न्यू क्लासिकल क्रिटिसिजम इन प्रेफेस टू शेक्सपियर सैम्युअल जॉनसन रोट अबाउट द शेक्सपियर्स थ्री यूनिटीज ऑफ प्ले इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट वी लर्न अबाउट द मेरिट्स एंड डी मेरिट्स ऑफ सैम्युअल जॉनसन्स प्रेफेस टू शेक्सपियर एंड ही प्रेजेंट्स देयर Shakespeare's merits and demerits and drawbacks of the playwriting in preface to Shakespeare. Now we are going to learn about the three unities of Shakespeare. Shakespeare's disregards of the unity is not a defect. According to Johnson, Shakespeare's disregard of the unity is not a defect. One practice in Shakespeare's writing of dramas which is regarded by critics as a defect, but which is not really a defect is his neglect of the unities of time and place it is held that these rules have been laid down by the joint authority of poets and critics and hence ought not to be violated johnson does not agree with this view and defends shakespeare when he is not required to look for the unities in the history plays for all that they need it is consistency and spontaneity of characterization the events in them are not subject to the writer's control in other plays shakespeare has observed the unity of action his plays have beginning a middle and an end as laid down by aristotle here and there we may find an incident which could be easily spared but on the whole there is nothing superfluous in them there is a logical sequence of incidents and the conclusion follows naturally shakespeare had no consideration for the unities of time and place in case the issue is closely examined it will be found that unlike the unity of action the other two unities are not essential they have given more trouble to the dramatist than pleasure to the spectator according to johnson here he said the there is a logical sequence of incidents and the conclusion follows naturally and they give they have given more trouble to the dramatist than pleasure to the spectator according to johnson here he praises shakespeare's three unities of time action and play unities of time and place pros and cons here we can understand merits and defects of the unities of time and place the argument given in favor of the unities of time and place is that if there are limit preserved credibility of the play is affected no one will believe that an action of months or years can take place within hours that the scene can change from greece to rome in the span of if mimic act our mind is mind it is aware revolts against apparent falsehood fiction loses its impact when it does not resemble reality see here we can understand how the unities of time and place used by shakespeare Johnson calls these arguments stupid. It is a mistake to imagine that the change of scene from Alexandria to Rome strains credibility. To do so would imply that the spectator actually imagines himself at Alexandria in the first act while he himself is sit- sitting at a theater in London. On the same ground, we can say that no audience can actually believe in point of time. that they are witnessing events that took place in the days of antony and cleopatra but it is the audience but if the audience can believe that in the first act there are at alexandria they can also believe that in the next act they are in rome and similarly they can also believe the changes in respect of time the spectators are fully aware from the first act to the last the 
that the stage on which events are being presented is only a stage and that the players are only players so here also samuel johnson said no audience can actually believe in point of time that they are witnessing events that took place in the days of antony and cleopatra there is nothing wrong in representing the stage as athens in the first act of the drama and as sicily in the second act when the stage drama. is drama only a stage and neither athens nor sicily if we accept that the unity of place is dispensable it is easy to accept that an extension of time is also valid drama presents successive imitation of sequential actions and there is no reason why lapse of time is not to be allowed between cause and effect or in other words between one act and the next the belief of the audience is not adversely affected by lapses of time between act see here we can understand how there is a successive imitation of sequential actions and there is no reason why lapses of time is not to be allowed between cause and effect the credulity of the audience dramatic illusion the fact that the spectators do not believe that they are witnessing actual events taking place and actual at actual places does not mean had they are totally incredulous of the various happenings on the stage they take the dramatic performance not as reality itself but as as a just representation of a reality the events and vices that they see on the stage are not believed by the spectators to be real events but they are accepted as events to which they themselves may be exposed if there is any <coughs> illusion it lies in the fact that the spectator fancies himself unhappy for a moment when he sees the actor represent unhappiness it is not that the spectator believes the actor to be unhappy the audience knows that they are witnessing only a fiction and it is it is this consciousness of fiction that is the source of the pleasure of tragedy if the audience took the murders in tragedy for reality it may no longer amuse them so audience knows what is the reality and what is the fiction and what is happened in front of their eyes on the stage this part suggests samuel johnson focuses on how the audience take the drama and feel the all the events in the drama so here we can understand samuel johnson write down about the three unities of shakespeare in his preface to shakespeare in next part we learn about the next part of preface to shakespeare till then thank you